This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's access media station, Plains FM, and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. It's time for Emergence News on Plains FM 96.9, Citizen Made Radio. Kia ora and welcome to Emergence News. We are a group of volunteers, the three of us in the studio, myself, Nigel, and I'm um, joined by John and Peter. We'll talk to them in just a moment. But we are all volunteers from a non-denominational worldwide network called Share International. We are individuals and groups, all volunteers, whose work brings together two directions of contemporary thought, the political and the spiritual. Our main purpose is to make known the fact that Maitreya, the new world teacher for the coming age, and the masters of wisdom are now among us and gradually emerging into the public arena. The name Share International refers to our conviction that the resources of the world, and by resources we're talking about food, raw materials, science and technology, all those resources should be shared according to need. The basic essentials of life, food, housing, access to healthcare and education should be available to us all as a universal right. And when I say that, John, that sounds really logical, doesn't it? It should be just a universal right that we have adequate healthcare and education, housing, and enough food so that we don't go hungry. But... For some reason, globally, just about every country in the world, and there's over 200 countries, they're run by governments which don't adhere to those basic principles of the United Nations Charter. It is the forces of materialism displayed through the practice of capitalism. It is a philosophy and a mindset that people will not let go of. And the reason the politicians won't let go of it is because it suits them and it gets them what they want. And those that place the politicians before the voting public, those that control the political process on this planet, want us to remain enthralled to the forces of materialism. And competition. They want us working 40 hours a week. They want us on the couch watching Friday night football. They want us going to work on Monday because they want us to buy their products. They want us enthralled on the treadmill of capitalism. What don't they want? They don't want us sharing. They don't want us unifying. They don't want us getting together. And there's one word that is like holy water to a vampire, to a capitalist, and that is sharing, right? It's anathema to their mindset. So if you want to destroy the vampires of capitalism, throw the holy water of sharing at them and they will wither and die. And Peter, (laughs) the very thing that the politicians want, which is what John's talking about. But what's interesting is that most of our politicians are quite confused now because they don't, they can't work out why their policies aren't working anymore. That's right. They're just um, at a loss. They think, oh, well, what do we need to do to win this election? Um, Tax cuts? Trade our way out of it. (laughs) Trade our way. We can trade our way out of anything. No, we can't. Mm. You can't trade your way out of climate change. You can't trade your way out of starvation if you're not prepared to share the world's resources, right? And it's that analogy of a spaceship. We're on a spaceship. Planet Earth is a spaceship. We are the crew. Why would we not share? But why are some of the crew actually um, cutting parts of the spaceship up and burning it? Because that's, that's materialism and capitalism. Materialism tells us we are greater by purchasing. We are more complete by ownership of material possessions. Okay, so so many people 
in this part of the world, look at Brazil, for example, and we think, why would they be chopping down their forests? They are the lungs of our planet. Yes. We're not going to be able to breathe if yep. they continue, and same in Indonesia. Yeah. Why are they blindly pursuing that line of economic activity? I suspect the man actually doing the chopping needs to earn an income and is at a point in their lives where, where they're desperate. Yeah, they're desperate and they believe that's all they can do and they believe that's all they're worth. Now, this is the problem with materialism as a philosophy. It teaches us, all of us, that we're only valuable if we can earn money and spend money. And we're, we're taught that line of thinking, Peter, at an early age through our education system. Oh, that's right. It's, a, it's part of our culture is to work hard and uh, you'll be fine. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm, you know, I was born and raised under the belief that 40 hours a week for 40 years would bring you everything you need. Happiness in life. Happy, nirvana. And then you'd get a pension. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, uh, I get taxed on my pension. How unfair is that? Mm. I've been contributing to it my whole working life and I get taxed on it. I didn't realise that. Yeah, it's madness. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a book entry, really. It's, it's secondary tax. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so, yes, there's just so many hidden tax. We're taxed in many hidden covert oh, ways, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, uh, you're sounding good, John. Thank you very much. Is it much. too loud in your headphones? No, no. No, we're no. all good. I just can't hear myself anymore. Oh, I They're see. They're back now. Yes, yep. okay. It's just there's a loose connection there, and I'll talk to our, there we are. I'll talk to our producer, Charlie, about that. Yeah, mm. it is a loose wire right there. Hey, look, it's great to have you in the studio, guys. Let's find <coughs> out what, what you're going to be looking at later in the program. First up, Peter, what are you going to be dissecting? Well, I've, I've got a master's message here called the Master's Pledge, and uh, it was brought through quite a while ago, but um, I thought it's very pertinent in today's conditions. And also um, something on the citizens' um, rights and assemblies. And there's something in the Share International there that's um, citizens' assemblies. It's a, a, a new approach uh, that Sweden has decided to do, and the, they're actually following on quite a few other countries, including Finland. Denmark, France, Germany, Spain, Austria, Ireland, and other places as well. But no, it's he's, a glo he's a global man, but, isn't he? No, hold on. Here we go. Sweden, Finland, yeah. Norway, Denmark, yeah. social democracy. Yeah. Those countries are leaders. Mm. I wish mm. I was Swedish. Scandinavian. I'd probably be taller and blonde. <laughs> well, they're actually asking for people's help, um, you know, people's opinions and getting assemblies together to do exactly that. They're amazing. You know, New Zealand could be the Sweden of the South Pacific, uh, the could, Finland of uh, the South they Pacific. They could and should be a bloody leader in the world. Oh, <laughs> God, it frustrates me. One thing I'll let you know, John, just a quick bit of feedback here. Yes. You are blonde, but you're not tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually silver. I prefer the word silver. <laughs> this is the Emergence News on Plains FM. For more information, go to shareinternational.org. You're listening to Emergence News. It's great to have you listening to the program. If you ever want to re-listen to any of our programs, you can visit Share International New Zealand and they have uh, all our programs on podcasts via YouTube and it is fantastic. And Spotify. Yes. We're on Spotify too. We're on Spotify and even Facebook. Yeah, we're big time, Nigel. Yeah, there's a fair few platforms there, John. Yeah, hey, look, John, time. let's have a look at what you're looking at. But before you go, I, I just wanted to revisit something you talked about. You and Peter, when we were thinking on a previous podcast, two or three programs back, you both came up with really interesting topics. Peter talked about health and integrated health and alternative health. And, mm -hmm. and you talked about the life's big question, basically, why am I here? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want to quickly revisit that was because you did a interview recently, Mystic Takeaway. Yes. And you talked about how you know what your mission in life is and what a difference that's made to you. Yes. It was an excellent point. Yeah. And I am going to talk today about the relationship between meditation and service and spiritual growth. And the next program, I'm going to talk about more about why am I here and 
and how how to find your mission. So the, today's program, I'm going to start with meditation as service because that is the platform, right? So it's a bit like if you're trying to get fit, you've got to start doing some cardiovascular, right? So meditation and service is like the bedrock of building your life on this planet so that you can find out who you are. Once you find out who you are or start that process of who am I, then you can start um, discovering what your skills are, what your abilities are, and that will help you build that mission. So I'm, I'm building towards that, Nigel. You and must if our listeners stay with us, yeah. um, we'll talk about some, stu- some intro stuff this week, and our next program I'll talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, well, we'll get you to hook right into it in just a sec. So those questions, why am I here, life's big question, why am I here on earth – and, you know, perhaps you were a Baha'i in a previous life because they call this the independent investigation of truth. And, and, what, is, and what does Maitreya teach? Honesty, sincerity, sincerity and, detachment. and detachment. What did Krishnamurti teach? Self-reflection. That self-reflection is the mental honesty. Mm. That is the start of honesty, sincerity, and detachment. It's how you grow. It's how you grow. It's Mm. that honesty. It's that self-reflection that, oh, my God, did I really say that? Oh, my God, did I really think that? It's that start process. And when we talk about honesty, sincerity, and detachment, we're talking about your honesty, being honest with yourself as the start point. And I liken it And it's. It sounds easy, but it ain't. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, in fact, Benjamin Krem's key idea is he talks about asking yourself, who am I? Who am I? And follow that thought, follow that almost like a meditative practice. Who am I? Train yourself Train to reflect. Train yourself yeah. to reflect. Um, and you're going to discover some awful things. I'm sorry, but you're going to discover some awful things about yourself. But... That is the ego defending its position, right? Because once you start this journey of who am I, the ego is going to front up and say, "Uh uh-uh, we aren't going there. I'm in charge. I'll tell you what to think and what to feel. So as soon as you start that process of who am I, you challenge the ego and the ego will fight you. And so you'll start discovering unpleasant things about yourself. And you'll go, I'm not going any further with this. This is awful. This is unpleasant. Keep going. Keep going because you're actually making progress. You're making progress. In the art of self-realization. Yes. And that's the major reason why Maitreya is among us. And when he openly declares himself as a teacher, that's what he's going to be teaching us, isn't it? Self-awareness leads to self-realization. And the start of self-realization is honesty, sincerity, and detachment. And as our friend Dick Larson says, the truth will set you free. Okay. Let's get into service and meditation. That's the, they're, the, they're the two crucial steps yes. in this direction. It's the kickoff. Yep. It's where you kick off, right? So I'm, I'm in the April 24 Share International magazine. It's an article by Benjamin Krem. And um, it's called Relationship Between Meditation and Service and Spiritual Growth. I'm just going to jump through with a couple of ideas. Firstly, he starts with the ideas of extrovert or introvert. Benjamin Krem tells us, Modern psychology has divided humanity into two main types, the contemplative and the man or woman of action. In other words, the introvert or the extrovert. Esoteric psychology, on the other hand, recognizes these differences in people's approach to life, but characteristically it aims at synthesis rather than analysis. It sees their eventual integration. To the esotericist, the introvert is one whose attention is focused inwards to the soul, who has good and easy contact with that aspect of themselves, for whom formal meditation is attractive as a more specific and organised means of deepening that contact, but whose contact with the outside world is relatively fragmented and limited. 
leading to difficulties of expression and functioning on the physical plane. Now, what he's also said around this is that you have a series of lives, a series of lives, sorry, in your incarnational process where you'll be on this inward stroke, this development, this work to get into contact with your soul. And then you'll have a series of lives where you're focused on the outward stroke, on, on, the, on the material world, on the physical world, right? And you'll keep doing that, alternating between those pathways until you can integrate them both. That's until, the word, isn't it? Integration. Yeah, until you can do both. So this is really important for me because I'm on the inward stroke, right? So meditation made co- real sense to me. Um, Benjamin Krem's teachings made real sense to me. However, I cannot screw a screw into the wall. Do not ask me to fix a car. The most I can do is pump up tires, right? If, you, if I go to a gas station and they've got a thing, right? I have really limited practical skills, yeah? So this has been interesting for me because it started to build that picture of who I am, yeah? Does that make sense? That's why meditation is important to me, because I'm on the inward stroke. So what about the big fella over here in the studio who's, who can, he can he build can a house? He can do both. Yeah, he can do both. And he can meditate. He's a Ray 7. Oh, he's a Ray 7. But Peter, what is, how does that resonate with you? Because you can do both. Well, I'm on the, the 246 line, to be quite honest. Um, and uh, that's the meditation uh, mm. line. But um, my physical body, including the brain, is Ray 7. Yep. Mm. So there's a bit of integration there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, what I'm good at is reading instructions. So that's how I stumble and bumble through that, that outer world, is I can read instructions. <laughs> so you'll be able to not only pump up the tyres at the gas station, but start fueling the car as well? <laughs> or do you need an attendant for that as well? <laughs> when I read instructions, I swear a lot. <laughs> it's a complete... You know, honestly, um, and I'm really lucky with um, my life partner because she's much more pragmatic than I am, right? So we, we get through. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of yelling the theory and she's hammering the nails, right? <laughs> but it works. Um, the extrovert is this person that's strongly focused. And what's interesting here is Krem has talked about people like Churchill, who I think was a three-point... Two, three point. Uh, yes, yeah, he was a three degree initiative. Three degree initiative, right? Around about third to three degrees. But yeah. he was strongly focused on the outer mm. and probably had no inward interest whatsoever. Mm. So you you couldn't have talked to Churchill about meditation. You go what? Yeah, yeah. Th- three Ray ones in his yeah. Per- makeup. Yeah. So you know, he so. was a highly evolved individual, but focused on the outer. He was on a mission. and He was on a mission, and thank goodness he was. Okay, so Cream continues with, the twin ways of the path to this integration are meditation and service. Through meditation, you get contact with the soul, and it's deepened and strengthened, gradually bringing about the infusion of the personality by the soul. And he talks about the light of the soul. As soon as the light of the soul comes in, Mr. Ego goes, hold on, this is my patch. I've got control here. And that's the difficult period. That's the tough stuff for the, for the person on the path, right? And I believe, Peter, it's probably between uh, first and second initiation where you're trying to overcome that emotional mechanism, which is the weapon of the ego, right? He says, through service, the purpose of the soul is carried out. The nature of the soul is to serve. It only knows altruistic service, and it serves the plan of the Logos. So what does that mean? So he goes on to say, nothing is so effective in decentralizing ourselves as service, and honesty and sincerity decentralize you, right? Because you start figuring out who you are and how you relate with others. So Nothing is so effective in decentralizing ourselves as service. Nothing so helps us to gain perspective and to grow spiritually. As we serve, we identify more and more with the other, that which we serve, and gradually shift the focus of our attention away from our little separate selves. This is really important. If you start this process of who am I, if you start that self-reflection, 
You've got to then do some service. You've got to start looking after and caring for others to help that process. Uh, he goes on to say, and, and this is really interesting for me, he goes on to say that a lot of the Eastern meditation traditions say that meditation is all you need to do. And Karim is saying, no, no, no. The meditation brings in the soul energy. The service releases it through the vehicles. If you're not doing both, you will develop what he calls the neuroses of the initiate. In other words, you're bringing all in all of this good power into your system, share it. Your, your soul energy. You've got to share it. You've got to release mm. it through your chakras, through your vehicles, out into the world, and you do that by service. If you don't release it, you're damming up your energetic structure, and you'll cause yourself some problems. So he goes on to say, um, through meditation, you draw in these energies and inspiration from the soul, which give life and meaning to the personality. Where these are denied, the correct outlet and service you're going to get issues with the personality, the mental, emotion, and physical. He talks about illnesses of the aspirants. So meditation and service is the right royal way to enlightenment. Key idea, key phrase. And it also brings the inner and outer forces together so that um, that, that outer um, life and their inner life, meditation and service, start to bring those together. Benjamin Cream, once again, meditation and service and spiritual growth. Thanks, John. That's terrific stuff. For more information, visit shareinternational.org if you're interested in the author, Benjamin Cream. Okay, Peter, uh, you've got uh, the latest issue, the June issue of the Share International magazine in front of you. That's right. I have, uh, Nigel. And this uh, is an interesting article uh, in here. It's called A Better Future for All, but it's Citizens' Assemblies, A New Approach to Policymaking. This spring, Sweden became the latest country to experiment with a citizens' assembly, where randomly selected citizens engage in deliberations on specific, complex societal issues. In Sweden's case, the topic was climate change. Similar national assemblies have been held in Finland, Denmark, France, Germany, Spain, Austria, Ireland. The aim of selecting Sweden's assembly participants was to ensure diversity and full representation of the country's demographic landscape. They were quite a complicated landscape there now, haven't they, with all the immigrants that they've got in there? Yeah. You know, yeah. They've got, it's they've a real got, challenge, yeah. real yeah. challenge for yeah. them. And their political system is uh, swinging right as well. There's certainly a global, a global swing there. to right-wing politics. Y- yes. And it's yes. the me group. Not we. It's, it's we, not me, fighting fighting and holding, trying to hold on to the conservative life. So from an initial pool of 7,000 individuals, 473 expressed interest, and the final 60 were chosen by an algorithm. So it's quite a good way of democratically doing it, isn't it? They represent a microism of Swedish society geographically and generationally, including citizens from 17 to 80. Participants heard keynote presentations by leading experts in climate science and policy, which laid a solid foundation for informed discussion and workshops and later deliberations online. Since transportation is a significant contributor to Sweden's greenhouse gas emissions, with the help of experts, participants examined alternative transportation modes, infrastructure developments, and behavioural changes needed to transition to a greener transportation system. The culmination of these deliberations will be a set of recommendations to be presented during an in-person meeting in May, when participants will vote on a final proposal. The ultimate goal is to communicate the final proposal to policymakers at national, regional and local levels. All of these experiments with democratic assemblies can enrich the public debate on climate and other issues, 
and encourage informed political engagement and meaningful action. They may be a wave of the future in coming times. All this information can be found on the Share International website, www.share-international.org. And also don't forget the podcasts, which are available on the Plains FM website. We welcome your comments, questions and feedback. Please contact us at emergencenews at gmail.com. 